Mixed martial arts or MMA exploded on the combat sports scene 30 years ago under the promotion company UFC. MMA fighters were free to use any mixture of styles like boxing, kickboxing, wrestling. This was a revolution in fighting sports, but it didn't start with the UFC. No, incredibly, it started right here in Western PA by a couple of entrepreneurial black belt clad Pittsburghers. I guess you could say it's a fighter's true test. We didn't know it was historic. We knew we had lightning in a bar. Lots of action. I don't like a regular boxing match. It doesn't have a name like mixed martial arts yet, but that's actually what's going on. Organized, legalized street fighting. We had just a whole bunch of crazy people. I like to beat up on people. I'm used to doing my fighting on the street. Because I am the toughest guy around. The ballroom of the Holiday Inn in New Kensington is where this is staged. The energy was unbelievable. The place was rocking. People were pounding. The testosterone was crazy. No one has ever seen this before. Seven. Eight. Nine. Me and my partner, Frank Calajuri, we were both promoting karate events at the time. And in the early days, everything was boot leather express. We hung up posters. We'd go to bars, gyms, and so on. Everybody knew someone that could beat someone up on your poster. And Frank and me were discussing you know, these guys, I'm getting tired of hearing it. I can beat this guy up, you can beat this guy up. And we thought, you know, we got all these crazy people and these bars think they're so tough. Why don't we get a contest together where they can fight on the ground, they can grapple, they can box, they can use karate, but we'll have rules and regulations to control it. We didn't have a name for it. And we thought since Pittsburgh is such a tough steel city, tough guy would just kind of fit in. Bill and Frank were very thoughtful and clear about what they were building towards. Um, this was not a fly-by-night operation. They had a written um, set of rules and regulations. They knew what you needed to have in place to look out for the best future for the sport and the best future for the people that are participating in it. We just had it. The enthusiasm, the crowd, all the people, all the excitement, they loved it. And we were selling out our events. I think it would have been huge, absolutely astronomically huge. So just as this sport is born here, it also essentially dies here, or it certainly um, goes dormant. And it's really because um, there are other people who are seeing the popularity of this, um, kind of jumping off on this idea, but not bringing the rigor and the organization and the level of oversight that Frank and Bill brought to the sport initially. Uh, and there is a tragedy in Johnstown where someone dies. We did Johnstown, very successful, no one hurt. The boxing came in, okay, they were called tough men. They had no weight classes. They put a 175 uh, pounder against a 200 some pounder. We had weight classes, rules. They were boxing, we were combined martial arts. We were nothing to do with it. There is a real outcry and there is political action and the Pennsylvania State Legislature actually comes together and bans the sport in the state of Pennsylvania. Sure, we were very, very, you know, we were let down, we were depressed. It's like we invented the TV and we're never allowed to turn it on. Frank and Bill, I mean, you can't deny that they really laid the groundwork in all the detail for what the sport's become today. Our rules took them 10 years to evolve into. We were way ahead of where the UFC was in 1993, back in 1980. The Viola family runs Allegheny Shotokan in the South Hills, where they are training generations of martial artists. Coming up, his gutsy move blew up the internet, but is he a hater or a fan? Stay tuned.